The Software Defined Networking and Open Flow webinar was made possible by the sponsorship of Big Switch Networks. Big Switch Networks are developing an SDN application for network virtualization, and you can get their open source SDN controller called Floodlight at the openflowhub.org. You can find Big Switch at bigswitch.com. This webinar is just one of many vendor independent data center and virtualization webinars available on IP Space. To learn more about them, visit ipspace.net. And don't forget that you get immediate access to all of them with a yearly subscription. Going back to my original diagram, what if the original diagram where I talked about routing protocols that populate the rib, the rib populates the fib, and the fib decides what is the forwarding pa path for packets and frames. So what if instead of this, I had a central controller to update the fibs on the routers and switches? What would that look like? Would that not still be a network? Would it still be the sort of thing that you wanted to have? So just to recap, routing table is your routing information base. There are many routes for a destination in a rib, but we only select the best route. We only load that one route into the FIB. And the FIB typically contains not only the input port, the output port, but often contains a layer two encapsulation data for the next hop, for those of you who are more network centric. So FIBs are built from RIBs in today's networking. In tomorrow's networking, it'll be different. To bring that back a little bit further, let's have a look at the device architecture again. The typical device architecture today is that the networking device contains the control plane, the forwarding plane and the management plane all within itself. The software that runs the whole system today is reasonably complex. That is software like OSPF, LDP, BGP is complex software, multicast, sparse mode, dense mode, PM, PIM, you know, all those protocols are all sitting inside of the software in an attempt to load data into the FIB for forwarding. And that means that today's networking devices are extraordinarily complex. A, a massive layer of control plane complexity resides around getting the right information into the FIB. So if instead of having everything sitting autonomously inside the system, we could have an open flow idea, the open flow model. And this is where we introduce open flow. And that is that the open flow controller sends the forwarding information data directly to an open flow client in the device. The device firmware then loads that into the forwarding path. So now we've retreat, we've taken all that complexity around the things in the networking equipment, the OSPF, the BGP, the OSPF, the PIM, all that sort of stuff in, a, in, a, in this model. We'll come back to some more, uh, come back to more practical details in a little while. The OpenFlow controller could load data directly to an OpenFlow client, which then loads it directly into the forwarding base. In this situation, there's really the only firmware or the only software in the device is chip firmware, enough to run the FIB or the TCAM memories, and to run simple device management functions. That is to present a CLI, to run the flash, to you know, monitor the power, systems environmentals, and that type of stuff. All of the complexity around generating the forwarding table could be abstracted away to an external controller or layer. So the network operating system will change a little to handle all We'll have the device operating system handling device operations, boot, flash, memory, TCAM chips, SNMP. SNMP will still be part of the future, I would say. At least that's the way it appears. You could consider a device that have no OSPF or multicast, and that device would have no code bloat. It would only have what you need. So the smallest code means less bug, less resources, less cost. Now, if you think about a typical device today, then how much money is spent to develop a product that has gigabytes of memory and flash and it all has to load and it all has to use the memory 
even when it's not needed. So even though your, you know, product X, you don't use multicast, that multicast feature is still there. It's still in the code base and it could cause you a bug. And your CPU has to be big enough to handle it because you might be the one customer in a thousand who needs multicast. When in fact, most people don't use multicast and never will. Or if they do, they use a vanishingly small component thereof. This is the exciting part for some companies is we could just focus our network operating systems right down to something very, very limited. To get more information about IPSpace webinars, please visit ipspace.net.